Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and this bad boy right here is the Infinix InBook X2. It's a clever wee 14 inch laptop, highly compact and portable, but packing some respectable specs aimed at the youth. So who better to review it than a bald and 40 year old craggy faced twat like me? The Infinix InBook X2 will set you back around 650 US dollars, so around 550 quid. So it's not budget, but it is a good price for a portable notebook boasting these kinds of specs. Now I've been using the InBook X2 for about a week now, so here's my in-depth review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now one of the big benefits of the InBook X2 is just how compact and lightweight this thing is. In fact, the design actually reminded me of a dinkier Chromebook and it weighs in at just 1.24 kilos, despite the fact that that chassis is completely constructed from metal. And as far as the thickness goes, it is just shy of 15 millimeters. So it's not ultra thin, but it's more than easy enough to cram into a moderately sized backpack. And adding to the general portability is that lightweight type C charger as well, which you get as easy enough to stuff inside of a bag and won't weigh you down. And that old metal chassis certainly seems more than hardy enough for lugging around all day, every day. There's no obvious flex or weak points anywhere on this thing. And despite the fact that I've generally not tread it with any kind of care this past week, it's been knocked about all over the place. There are no signs of any scratches or any other marks anywhere on that lovely silver surface. Speaking of which, if this popular yet decidedly dull greyish colour doesn't exactly baste your spuds, well, you can also nab the Infinix InBook X2 in blue, green and red, which should certainly draw glances down your local coffee hall. The design is fairly straightforward with this rather fetching two-tone effect for the lid and thank the baby Jesus it is a brushed metal effect all over as well, so no greasy fingerprints or other marks to speak of. And there's also a rather lovely selection of ports slapped on at the Infinix InBook X2 as well, despite the compact form factor. You've got a USB-C port used for charging as well as data with full display port support. There's also a USB-C that's used for data only, two USB 3.0 ports, an HDMI 1.4 port and an SD card slot. So in other words, you've got a better selection of ports on this thing than you do on a £4,000 MacBook Pro. Not too shabby. Now the Infinix InBook X2 sports a chiclet style keyboard that stretches almost fully from edge to edge, really making the most of that compact chassis. And a few minor complaints aside, it is a proper solid board. Each key, as you can see there, has afforded plenty of space for the most part, at least the one notable exception being that single row enter key. Curse you Infinix! But I found that touch typing was effortless. I reached my peak speeds with basically no period of adjustment whatsoever. The travel is admittedly quite shallow, but it's just about deep enough to keep the typing experience comfortable over long periods. And there's only the merest hint of sponginess towards the center of that board. It's really not bad at all. And the InBook X2's keyboard is also fully backlit, as you would hope at this price, with two degrees of brightness, which is perfect for working in low light. My only other complaint is that column of shortcut keys which have been slapped on the far right, which meant I consistently missed the enter key every time I went blindly groping for it. That's certainly a personal problem though, and besides that, I am very happy indeed with this board. As for the InBook X2's touchpad, well once again it makes good use of that limited space, and it works a charm if you happen to not have a mouse on board, but my one complaint is that clicking action is very loud indeed. So if you're, for instance, using the laptop in bed, you've got somebody else sleeping next to you or trying to sleep next to you, you don't want to be doing that. You want to just be using the old uh, tap the surface gesture instead. Now housed up above the display in that rather slender bezel is a 720p HD camera, which you can probably just about make out there. That's pretty standard specs for this sort of price point, but it is a very basic camera indeed. You'll find that the image is rather grainy whenever you're using the laptop in uh, indoor conditions with quite ambient lighting, which of course most people will be doing. You'll need really strong lighting in order to make the most of it. And to Infinix's credit, it has tried to counter this issue with what it calls fill lights. It's basically dual LEDs housed alongside that camera. You can activate it by pressing the function key on the space bar, like so. However, I've got to say it's not the most comfortable way of uh, having a web chat, having these two piercing lights shining right in your face. And the actual impact it makes on the video quality is kind of minimal anyway. In fact, if anything, it actually probably makes me look more pasty than I do in real life. I'm actually starting to resemble the ghost of Christmas past. And the Infinix InBook X2 also sports a dual mic arrangement to pick up on your voice if you decide to do a bit of Skyping or Zooming or Microsoft Teaming without actually connecting a headset. And they do an alright job of picking up you, uh, but they also do a pretty good job of picking up everything else that's going on around you, so not ideal if you share your household with pets, uh, kids, other mental things like that. 
And it is also slightly annoying that not only does the webcam not support Windows Hello, but there's no kind of fingerprint sensor or anything here on the InBook X2 either. So basically it's pins and passwords all the way. Now the Infinix InBook X2 comes with Windows 11 packed on there straight out of the gate. And I found this behaved itself absolutely perfectly here, no crashing or little bugs that I noticed. And also as an added bonus, if you happen to be rocking a recent Infinix smartphone like the Note 11, the 11S or the 11 Pro, then you'll be able to enjoy some bonus features here on this laptop, such as the smart hotspot feature and the quick file sharing. And if you don't, then you can't. Now let's turn our attention to the Infinix InBook X2's 14 inch display. It's an IPS panel sport and a 16 by nine ratio. So it is well suited to media and split screen multitasking. Those Full HD visuals are sharp and detailed enough for enjoying HD content on Netflix and whatever other streaming services you may enjoy and also for editing photos on the fly. Although on the editing front, note that just 95% of the sRGB gamut or 74% of the Adobe RGB gamut are covered here, so colour reproduction isn't as strong as some rivals. That screen peaks at just over 350 nits, so it is a laptop that's best used indoors when possible. But at least you do have an anti-glare finish on that screen as well, which helps to counter any strong reflections. So it can be used outdoors as long as you're generally just browsing the web, checking messages, things like that. If you want to enjoy a movie or a show, you'll definitely want to find some shelter from the sun. And I had no complaints at all when streaming some video while cooking my lunch, especially as that stereo speaker arrangement pumps out some surprisingly good audio. The channels are distinct, although admittedly the speakers could definitely do with being a little bit louder on that top volume, because in a noisy environment, those vocals are swiftly drowned out. As for performance, well, that's provided by an Intel Core i7 1065G7 CPU backed here by eight gigs of RAM. And that proved absolutely fine for your everyday tasks. And even if you want to leave dozens of Chrome tabs open because that's how you roll, no worries at all. You can also play older or more basic games, no worries, but faster paced graphically demanding titles are a no-go. You'll definitely want to up your budget if you want more freedom in that area. And Infinix's ice storm cooling system does a bang up job of whisking away any pesky hot air and keeping the InBook X2 nice and cool, as long as you aren't putting it under serious pressure, of course. And it's a nice silent cooling system as well. As for your storage, well, you've got a 512 gig SSD packed inside of that compact chassis, giving you plenty of space for lots of apps and media around 450 gigs of it is free to begin with. Plus it's reasonably nippy for the price as well, consistently showcasing over two gigabits per second read speeds and usually just under two gigabits per second write speeds. As for the battery life, well that's respectable if not great here on the Infinix InBook X2 laptop. I found that the charge tended to drop around 18% consistently, whether you were working on Chrome, doing a bit of multitasking with the likes of Deezer on the go, or just straight up streaming video as well. So overall you'll find you'll get around six hours of use from a full charge on this laptop, which obviously isn't quite good enough to stretch a full day away from home. So you will have to carry that charger with you, at least as I said before, it is quite a dinky lightweight one. And there you have it, that in a nutshell is the Infinix InBook X2, quite a portable dinky Windows 11 laptop, which as I say, should be hitting stores for around 650 US dollars. And if you're looking for something around that sort of price point that's highly compact and portable with respectable battery life, decent enough performance to do everything, all the way up to photo editing and a bit light game, and well, it'll do the job. So anyway, that's what I think, but it'd be great to hear your own thoughts down in the comments below. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a bloody fantastic rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you.